Here we are, folks. No Sleeves 12 here. Today's episode of Short Side Wristers, we are going to discuss the return of one of the better cards early on in NHL 19. We're going to talk about the GWC qualifiers for the Europeans that happened last weekend, as well as how the playoff cards are going and my takes on the playoffs so far in the NHL. So let's hop right into it. First, let's discuss the new comp season with the reward being a 94 Paul Coffee. Now, normally, I'm kind of annoyed when EA recycles content as far as legends and players go, but Paul Co the Paul Coffee card was one of the better cards, especially early on in NHL 19, and really held his value if you managed to upgrade him. He was actually one of the rarest cards in the game if you had the 95 version. But the 94 version that is in the comp season, the good news is, is again, it's the top 100 that get him. It isn't, you know, the top 5 get the 97 version and then onward and onward. It's literally one of those ones where it's like the 94. Everyone that's at the top 100 will get him. So it is a good card to grind for. He's got great speed and a good shot. And like I said, if he plays anything like the Paul Coffey cards that we had early on in the season... He might actually stay on a few people's teams. I know it's getting late in the season. Everyone's got these beastly teams, and he's not a 99, but his card has always been very good so far in this game. Like I said, does have BU as well. So he's going to be someone that is sought after. And even if you don't want him, you could probably sell him for quite a bit. Like I said, he was extremely popular early on. So that is good to see we're getting away from that pack comp season. That was kind of crap. The new Hut Champs is the 98 Mika Zidbinajad. His stats look pretty good. I mean, 99 speed's great, but the 95 shot as well. Um, you know, a lot of Rangers fans were kind of upset when Zidbinajad didn't get Team of the Year or Community Team of the Year or anything like that. So I guess this kind of appeases that. Taking a quick look at the Zidane Chara, he is a master set player. His price is still pretty high. I did see one there that was under 600k. Right now, the collectibles are going for about 30 to 32k. They should drop a little bit with the comp season rewards being released and a lot of people getting the the collectibles. But the collectible pull rates have been really bad, like worse than any other set type that we've had throughout the year, like Christmas, Halloween, all of that. So um, they might not drop too, too much, but as the as the time goes on, you can't do the Zanochara and Rob Brindamore set twice. So um, eventually they are just going to come down because people are either going to have the Zanochara or Brindamore and they're just going to have to resell them like myself. So they could drop under 30k. Again, I mentioned this in the Zanochara video I did last week. I got some comments where people are saying they don't, you don't need him. Of course, you don't need him, guys. Um, I, like I said, I don't use um, very large players. Like I don't seek out just they have to be big. That's the most important. I look at speed and shot first before size. But when I play with Zanochara, it is noticeable. Like it's fun. There are a few cards that you get in the game. If just thinking off the top of my head, throughout the year, uh, the ninety-one Pat Thanksgiving Master Set Patrick Kane where you have that card, and it's just really fun to deke with him. Um, Mario and Wayne are currently the two that I notice the most, as with as well as shooting with Rasmus Dallin. But when I'm defending with Zanochara, it's just fun. He's a mammoth, and uh, it is a card I, I would, I would um, you know, advise you guys to go after and grab, but it's not a must-have, no. So uh, that does take care of him. He is going to drop a little bit, like I said, because it's just, you know, the, the more and more packs that are pulled... You're going to see him drop a little bit. Now, I did get two packs to open up, so I'll just fire them off here. I have probably pulled 10 or 12 of these Stanley Cup packs. Never gotten an actual Stanley Cup player. I did get a collectible in this one, so that's pretty sick. But, yeah, man, I, these pull rates, uh, I hope that, like, the, the problem a lot of people had this year is that... They included bronze and silver cards and gold packs. And I get the thought process behind it because if you bought the silver or bronze packs, you could potentially get a gold card. The problem is that if someone buys packs, no one's buying bronze or silver packs. So all they're doing is they're buying the gold packs with the potential to get worse players in them. And I don't really know. I mean, I think that they've done a great job this year at the market. I think the market has been their baby, and they made sure to not mess it up like last year. Last year was a mess, and on top of the gameplay, you had the market being a disaster, and it really killed Hut early on. And I think this year, they've done a great job. I mean, there's still legend cards that you could get the first day the game came out that you can still use. Um, I think that's I think that's fantastic, and um, you know I get them being safe. Now looking at the Stanley Cup cards currently with a bunch of wins. So guys, just remember that it's 5 p.m. Uh, the next day that they do update. It seems just like um, Evos and things like that. 
So as we're looking at it right now, a couple teams have three wins, a couple teams have two wins. If we put it at 500K, I'm just looking because, you know, you don't want to spend it too much on them because, again, if they chance they get to a 99, that's great. But there's team of the year cards that you can still get for the same price that are already guaranteed. Looking at that Casperi cap, and I'm not going to lie, uh, the Leafs, I called the Leafs in five for whatever reason. And I just think the Leafs are going to win, not necessarily in five, but I thought it'd be a short series and I wanted to make a bold call. Um, but uh, Kasperi Kavanaugh might be something you want to look at. Uh, Dimitri Orlov, remember, if they win the series, well, Washington, I mean, they fell apart in that last game. Rip Svechnikov. Awesome that he dropped the gloves, but man, Ovechkin did him dirty. Um, if they win the series, that's going to get, you get double the synergies. So Demorla Orlov's going to have some pretty good synergies times two, and, you know, he is a good defenseman. Um, but like I said, this Kasperi Kapitan card, under 500K, I mean, you're calling your shot a little bit, but I, I really think this might be the Leafs year. I don't know. I, I have no idea why. No basis for it other than that. Um, quick team update. I uh, haven't really been able to play a lot, guys, because of my internet and the situation I'm actually moving. Uh, May, it's going to be right back to normal, but I've been super busy with some stuff here. So I'm three away from a full 99 team, four away if you include Dougie Hamilton, I guess, but man, he plays like a 99. Um, so that is my team currently. Let's talk some gaming world championships. So this week, past weekend, if you didn't see on Twitch or Twitter or anything like that, uh, the European guys did play their qualifiers to get into the regionals. And on Xbox, uh, we had Eki and the returning champion Eki make it. Uh, great to see just for storylines alone. Um, he dominated last year, and he's already into the regionals this year. So good for him. I'm glad that he made it. Elung, um, he is one of the, you know, uh, not really known guys, which is great to see. Again, I think that the adding Hut as this tournament does add a little bit more randomness than Versus. And um, it is good to see that, it, the you know, the lesser known guys are represented. Uh, just, like I said, adds, adds drama to it. The other two from Xbox are more known players. Hans Zelino being one of them. And Super Verda. Let's go. Verda is a darling in the Twitch community, especially this year. And it was awesome to see him persevere, even though he was streaming off of his cell phone. Unbelievable run, and I'm really happy that he was able to lock up regional. So those are the four from Xbox that will be going on PS4. Uh, again, we had someone that was a little bit lesser known, um, would be Sage95. I've played him in Hut actually once. Uh, I know he's a very good player. He's just not um, not as not as big as the other guys. Then we had Kriketsi, who did go to the Tampa events, and the other two joining him was uh, Dominointi and Plea Maker. Uh, again, Plea is one of the guys to watch out for, especially he was one that made it last year as well to the regionals, but unfortunately didn't make it to the grand finals. So those are the guys that are qualified so far. They will have their uh, games between them to determine seating for the actual live event. That happens, I believe, in two weeks. This weekend is the big one, though. That is going to be really fun to watch. If you guys are interested in playing or watching NHL at the highest level, whether you think it is the right way to play or not, there are a lot of stuff that you guys might find as cheesy or thing or glitchy. Um, these guys are like the masters of this game, regardless. Don't hate the player, hate the game kind of thing. But uh, we're getting Canada, and Canada PS4 specifically looks to be a gong show. Uh, it is deep. If you look at the bracket, there is a lot of all of the big guys up at the top, you know. And on Xbox, I think that it is a little bit more top heavy with the more known play. We got Grant, Young, Gren, John Wayne, um, all those guys. But the depth through a little bit down below does lack compared to PS4 and Canada. I think that PS4 and Canada might have, you know, uh, three or four guys that aren't, you know, whether it be content creators or professional NHL players that, you know, have been dominating the versus scene this year. It's going to be really cool to see, and I'm excited for it. Uh, so I will be doing play-by-play -play for that one on my Twitch this weekend, Saturday. So be sure to check that out if you want to watch. So guys, that is going to do it for short side wristers today. Again, let me know in the comments section down below what you think about the Paul Coffee and things like that. And uh, you know, I'd love to I'd love to hear from you guys. I do also want to mention I love the fact I made my first really ever prediction video, and man, some of the comments early on were bad. Like my take, the Islanders were gonna beat Pittsburgh. It is fantastic to roll through those and just hit them with a winky face. Um, I can't wait to see how the rest of the playoff goes, except for my Sharks. 
they're pretty much toast. I said that uh, one of the keys would be Martin Jones just playing average, and he can't do that. So, uh, you know, roast me on Twitter or whatever, guys. My, my Sharkies are out again pretty much. So you guys have a good day, and uh, I'll see you next time.